Hi everyone and welcome to another Korean lesson from Korean Studio. My name is Kim Gi Hwan. Now today we're going to learn the verb phrases asosoyo and asosoyo. And in many textbooks, these uh, verb phrases asosoyo and asosoyo are labeled as the past perfect or the present perfect tense. And although there are certain similarities between asosoyo and asosoyo and the names of these English verb tenses, there are also certain differences. So today, um, in this lesson, we're going to learn the basic essence of the verb phrases asosoyo and asosoyo and learn how they are used in specific situations. So let's begin with the pronunciation of asosoyo and asosoyo. Now, because of connective speech, the sangsyot pachim in the first two syllables carry over to the following syllables. So they are pronounced asosoyo and asosoyo. Asosoyo, asosoyo. So if we look at these three examples, this is sasosoyo, sasosoyo. This is bogososoyo, bogososoyo. And this is chua hesosoyo, chua hesosoyo. So both sangjo pachim carry over to the following syllables. Okay, so let's now consider the basic principle of how these verb phrases are used. Here are three example sentences that use the verbs past tense. 저는 고기를 먹었어요. I ate meat. 저는 축구를 좋아했어요. I liked football. 저는 영어 학원을 다녔어요. I went to, I attended an English language school. Now, in these sentences, we use the verbs past tense. 먹었어요, 좋아했어요, 다녔어요. And each sentence talks about something that happened in the past. So I may say the first sentence to talk about what I ate last week. I may say the second sentence to talk about a sport that I liked. And I may say the third sentence to talk about what I did in my spare time last year. So these sentences refer to something that happened in the past. Now, from our verbs past tense to form asosoyo and asosoyo, we can simply add an extra a to a verb's past form. So we now have 저는 고기를 먹었었어요. 저는 축구를 좋아했었어요. 저는 영어 학원을 다녔었어요. So making these verb phrases is really simple if you know how to make verbs into their past forms. And in terms of how these verb phrases are used, they all indicate that all these past actions ended at a certain time in the past. Now this time is generally not indicated within the sentence. And because these actions ended in the past, these verb phrases indicate that these actions are no longer true in the present. And generally it's this connection to the present that makes these verb phrases similar to the present perfect tense. So with the first sentence, the past tense was just used to talk about what I ate in the past. But with 먹었었어요, we're saying that I ate meat in the past, but I stopped eating meat, so I no longer eat meat in the present. And this sentence kind of means I used to eat meat. And it's a sentence that might be said by someone who became a vegetarian. With the second sentence, the past tense was just used to talk about a sport that I liked in the past. But with 좋아했었어요, we're saying that I liked football in the past, but I stopped liking football. So now I don't like football. And this sentence now kind of means I used to like football. With the third sentence, the past tense was used to talk about attending an English language school in the past. But with 다녔었어요, we're saying that I attended a language school in the past, but I stopped attending the language school, so now I don't attend that language school. And this sentence now kind of means I used to go to an English language school. So as you can see, this aspect of how asosoyo and asosoyo is used to talk about something that I did in the past, but no longer do in the present, makes them similar to used to in English. Now, if there was more context in these sentences, then even the past tense could also mean that I stopped doing the action at some point in the past. So I could say, 저는 작년에 영어 학원을 다녔어요. 그런데 
요즘엔 중국어 학원을 다녀요. I went to an English language school last year, but these days I go to a Chinese language school. So by saying that I go to a Chinese language school now, it implies that I stop going to an English language school. And in this type of sentence, where context tells you that some action in the past has stopped, the verb phrase 다녀서요 is fine. We don't need to add the extra art to the verb 다녀서요. However, if we want to say how I used to go to a language school in a single sentence, we would use 다녔었어요, as this verb phrase includes the meaning of the action stopping in the past and no longer being true in the present. So that's the key use of 아서서요 and 어서서요, to say that some action in the past stopped at a certain time in the past and is no longer true in the present. And because of this meaning, it is often used in a similar way to used to in English. Now, another interesting use of 아서서요 and 어서서요 is when these verb phrases are used with the verbs 가다 to go and 오다 to come. Consider the following English sentence. Jinsu went to Jeju Island at the weekend. Now, this sentence could mean two different things. One, it could mean that Jinsu went to Jeju Island and he is still there. For reasons not stated in the sentence, he is yet to come back. Perhaps that's where he lives, or perhaps he is attending the University of Jeju. Second, it could mean that Jinzu went on a trip to Jeju Island, and he has since returned back to where he is originally from. So the past form of go, went, can imply two different meanings, and whether it means one or the other depends on the context the sentence is used in. However, in Korean, depending on which meaning you want to convey, you would use two different verb tenses. To convey the first meaning, as in to simply say that someone has gone somewhere, you would just use the past form of 가다 and say 진수는 주말에 제주도에 갔어요. 진수는 주말에 제주도에 갔어요. And this sentence kind of means 진수 went or has gone to Jeju Island. We're merely stating that 진수 has gone to Jeju Island. Now, based on the context of the conversation, the listener may understand that Jinsu went to Jeju Island for a trip and has since come back. But whether he has returned or not is not included in this single sentence. However, if we want to convey the second meaning, as in Jinju went to Jeju Island and has since returned, we would say, Jinsu는 주말에 제주도에 갔었어요. 진수는 주말에 제주도에 갔었어요. And this sentence means Jinzu went to Jeju Island and came back. Jinzu went to Jeju Island, but he came back from Jeju Island at some point in the past and is currently not in Jeju Island. So all this meaning is included in this single verb phrase. It's similar meaning to have been when we talk about places we have been to before. So we use 갔어요 to say that someone has gone somewhere and use 갔었어요 to say that someone has been somewhere. However, as with anything, context is really important. Now, if I were to talk about me having been somewhere over the weekend, it becomes less important as to whether I say 갔어요 or 갔었어요 because I'm already telling this story to the person I'm speaking to so he can understand based on the context that I have come back from that trip. So if I'm talking about myself, I can say 저는 주말에 제주도에 갔어요 or 저는 주말에 제주도에 갔었어요. Both would be okay. However, when talking about someone else, like Jinsu, it becomes more important as to whether you use one verb phrase or the other. Because if, based on the context, the other person doesn't know whether Jinsu has come back from the trip, uh, depending on which verb phrase you use, the person may understand Jinsu as still being in Jeju Island or having returned. So to add more clarity to what you're trying to say, particularly if there's no context and you're just saying that one sentence, it becomes really important that you use one or the other. Similarly, let's consider the verb order, which means to come. If I say, 진수는 주말에 저희 집에 왔어요, 진수 came to my home at the weekend, 진수는 주말에 저희 집에 왔어요, this sentence simply means that Jinzu came to my house at the weekend, and it does not include the meaning of Jinzu leaving my house. However, if I say Jinzu는 주말에 저희 집에 왔었어요, then this means that Jinzu came to my house, 
but it left at some point in the past and is no longer present in my house. And all that meaning is included within the single verb phrase. So when we use the verbs of motion such as kada and oda, the distinction between the verbs past tense and asosoyo and asosoyo is really important to indicate where the other person is in the present. Okay, so to sum up, we use asosoyo, asosoyo to talk about some action that was done in the past, but also ending in the past, and therefore no longer being true in the present. In this way, asosoyo and asosoyo can be used in a similar way to used to in English. Also, when we use the verbs kada and oda with asosoyo and asosoyo, we're saying that someone has gone or come to a place and then returned, rather than just saying that someone went or came to a place. Okay, so that's it for today's lesson, and I hope now you have a very good understanding of the essence of the verb phrases asosoyo and asosoyo, and how they are used in certain situations. I look forward to seeing you soon again. Bye-bye.